So, uh, first of all, I'm not a Kashima traditional uh, teacher. So I'm an Aikido teacher who is very interested in Kashima work. But if you want to study Kashima for real, please find a certified Kashima teacher. So I can just share my my thoughts and my points about the, the study I've been doing myself and you know with other people. So, but I don't I want to say that I'm not a certified Kashima teacher. It's more about being inspired and and um, uh, ah, you can hear okay. Be sharing inspiration and also thoughts about why we do the movements. Um, and I have my approach to why we do it. Uh, other teachers, of course, have their approach to the same katas. So something I like to emphasize a lot is that not pushing or pulling too much in the form. I think position uh, is much more important because when we place ourselves in, in the right position, in the right moment, it's done. We don't have to push or pull very much. And uh, pushing and pulling for me is, is also something the partner can use against us. So I try to avoid that more emphasizing on, on where we are in the room together and how to uh, study the form together by positioning and placing ourselves and, and learning how the timing about the movement. So the second series uh, is uh, there are t 10 movements, 10 katas, and we'll do five now and then five the next Saturday. And I will focus on the kata, not on how to teach people how to cut but uh, we don't have time for that. So we focus on the kata itself. And the second series is called Uratachi or Uradachi, but it's, uh, the focus is on receiving. And when I say receiving, it's what the student is studying. Because in Kashima, traditionally, the teacher is uke and the student is nage. So I will be the uke in this form and Mats is studying and he's studying how to receive my entry, my cut. In the first series, the student studies how to express themselves, how to put their power out. In the second series that we do now, we study, the student studies how to receive the power. In the third series, we're almost equal and we study how to blend. And in the fourth series, we study in a closer distance and it's much more speedy and how to react on the movement very quickly in a short distance. So there are different basic qualities in each. Uh, and then there's a fifth series, which is more connected to uh, real fighting style. But uh, every series has an emphasis. And I want to mention that, that in the second series, it's about receiving. So what I'm as a teacher is going to give him is a very heavy, deep cut that he has to work on. And he has to work on how to receive that cut. But it's also important that when he's receiving, he's not passive and he's not passively reacting to what is happening. He is creating something. So he's not just responding to my movement, but he also is creating something from the moment. So he's receiving, but creating at the same time. And there are two kamae we have to know for the second series. It's a mu kamae, where I will show it in a moment. And then there's the hasu kamae. And about the hasu kamae, there are different ways to do it. You can stand with your foot back or with your foot forward. I, I do it with the foot forward. This is how I was taught. And I have mainly practiced with the Tisia sensei and many of his students. Uh, so I, I do it with the foot forward for hustle. But of course, there are other styles to do this. Okay, so let's start. We will bow in and uh, Begin.
きます。So, first of all, Mukamai, the sword rests on your front leg, and Mu is empty, means empty. So, the Mukamai is an empty Kamai. From this empty Kamai, you can actually go to any cup. So, the feeling is you have all possibilities, it's open, it's empty. And the sword is very light, resting on your, your front leg. And the front leg is very free. So that you can choose a direction. You can move in any direction. So it's a very loose, open feeling. Of course, straight posture. And you can enter in, into any cut. The Hasso Kamaya, as I do it here, it's resting on my right shoulder, and I prefer to have it quite straight. There are other versions where the sword is back. I prefer to have it almost straight. And then this hip is very free, and the toes are barely touching in the ground. From here, I can enter into Yokumen or Shomen, and of course, other cuts too, but these are the ones we emphasize in this kata. Important thing, when you move forward, don't dip your sword behind you. So if I want to move forward here, I can push the handle forward, but I don't drop the sword behind me. So I can push forward and cut, but don't drop the sword. So there, your hands move forward and your sword stays. For showman, it's very similar. For showman, it's here, and then cut. But it's not dropping too much behind because I'm too open and my partner will just enter completely here. So when you move your hands forward, don't dip your sword behind you and you cut. Okay, so what we will do now is to show the first Five, just one time through. And I'm the Uke, and Mats is the Nage. So these are the first five, and we'll go into detail about this. And uh, we'll start with the first one. So the first one <clears throat> here, I go up into Hasso here, resting with my front foot, the sword here, and I'm going to cut showman. And I will do it in a way where I move my hands forward and cut. Avoid dipping your sword because he will just enter straight. Bam. So I push my hands forward and enter. And the feeling now is I want to enter from above because this space is my space now. My space is here. So my hustle, it's almost like this because he controls this area so i really want to make a deep heavy cut from above so i enter high to cut here straight and his response in this from mu kamai where his sword is 
just in front of his right leg, resting. He goes up to touch my wrist here. And he enters inside. And this is very important now for his, his feeling. This is like a roof here. So don't push the sword up. He's somewhere here. And I'll try to explain this position a little bit. So from here, um, here. One, he has to enter deep enough so I cannot reach him easily so that my cut would pass here. But also, Mats is inside here, which means he, he could enter through this opening. Because my feeling about this is he doesn't just control me with the sword and the wrist. He controls me with his position. And I'll try to show you what I mean. When he enters, he could go through here. He can go right through the opening under. I'll show it from this position here. Here, boom, here. Because he is inside. The other thing he can do from this position is here, cut. So the next movement, when I go down, it's not because he pushed my hand. It's because he showed me that his position is superior. He is inside, he can go through, he can step back, he can cut, I'm completely open. So when he chose to finish, I accept that he was in a better position than me. I don't go down because he pushed my wrist. Of course, there is a contact, a light contact, but this is not the main thing for me. It's his position that tells me he is inside. So in the next feeling here, he brings me down here. Um, and I accept the movement. And I prefer to stay on a straight line like this. And I prefer to have my sword here. There are different variations for this too. But he's controlling my wrist. But he never pushed. Also, if Mats would push from here. If he tries to push, I can release. There's nothing that says I can't release my hand. So he's not really pushing. He's entering inside and telling me I have to move. So we show it one more time. I try to come with a high showman. He enters under inside and I accept the movement on the line and stay in connection. And then I don't move until he release. Now he release and I can move again. So when he re release the contact. So please try two and two. The first kata. Actually, Warren and Gary Thank you. 
Okay, so let's let's repeat it, and I want you to do it three steps. So if Matt is here, I'm going to attack. I go up in Hasukamai. He's in Mukamai. Now I move my sword forward. I try to enter with a high showman. He enters under, and now he pushed me. Ooh, here, right in my chest because he's inside. Number one. Number two. He will show another opening from the same position here. He steps back and cuts me. Number three, he's doing the kata. From this position, he do the kata and I accept. So we repeat one more time. First, he enters inside and he goes through here. Number two, from this position here, he steps back and cuts. Number three, which is the kata, I accept that he's in a better position than I am. So please tie these three going through, stepping back, cutting, and ending with the kata. Okay, so for the first form, the important position is here under your sword. Don't raise your hands, keep them down. Because if you raise your hands, the opening is smaller. When you drop your hands and you have your opponent's sword right here, the opening is much bigger. And that's where you can enter. And also from this position, it's easy to step back and cut. If your sword is too high, you're more locked in this. So I'm here, I can cut, I can go in and I can finish the kata. So my emphasis is on placement. If you position yourself, you can do all three. You can from the same place, either push through or step back and cut or finish the kata from the same place. And of course there are other things we could do too, but I just, just give an example. So don't go so strong into the position that you have no other choice. Okay, so let's look at the second kata. So we just show it one time first. I go up in Hasso and he's in Mukamai. I move forward, showman, same way. He creates contact with my elbow and turns his sword and controls me here. So maybe we do it from, from this side too. What's very important here for him is to lean inside and create an early contact. So from here, So if Mats is up, and I will try to show this connection, if you go up to Hasso here, my connection is here. Important, your sword, the direction of your sword is like this. Don't have it like this. 
you're here. You race on the line, just straight. So he's going straight up. And at the moment of contact, the sword turns. But don't go out. <laughs> straight up, connect, and turn your sword. So we'll see one more time if Max is here and I will attack. So he goes straight in, connects to my sword and then drops. And I sink down, I accept the movement here. So just try this form, two and two. The second kata. Okay, so we will show this second kata with three variations. Because I use the same idea. From the position he is in, he should be able to do a lot of different things. Otherwise, his position is not free. He's in a tunnel. So he will show three examples of what to do from the same place. So first, <clears throat> I enter with Hatsu, he creates connections, sorry, here, and stops. Now, he can, he can stop here. Second, he will pass. He can cut and pass. Number three, he will turn and put me down. Here. And I will show this from, from another position. So maybe from here. So number one, he will just stop. He stops here. A little weight on my elbows, not too much, but some weight on my elbows. Then number two, he will cut through from the same position, he can move, he cuts through. And from the very same position, he can also turn to me. He turns and ends. So please try these three variations, stopping, cutting through, or turning and sinking.
Okay, good. So you can practice more later. We just give you a chance to feel the movement. So the first one, Mats is entering inside, touching my wrist with the one third of his sword, coming in under and cutting down. The second one, the sword moves to the other way, but remember to enter straight, lift your sword, and at the moment of contact, about one third of your sword, you turn and then you can stay or cut through or turn and drop. But close the gap between you and your partner because if Mats leaves a too big gap here, it's going here, I will cut. So, he needs to close the gap and feel very tight. Now it's much more difficult for me to reach him. If we turn here, it, it's much more difficult for me to reach. But if there's a gap between us, I can cut. So here, it's very close, it's very tight. So before I can do anything, he can either drop or turn or leave. He can leave out. Um, so number three, we'll show it first, just normal. So we do this with a contact with the sword. He catches my sword. Of course, it can be done with a split. And Matt will show one time, here I enter, and he goes, oh. now he, he just cut my sword straight down. And of course, this is possible, but we will not emphasize it right now. We will emphasize how to catch the sword. And if Mats is here, when he comes up here, my, my sword turns and then it turns back again. So it's not, a straight cut for me. I can do, but now I emphasize this here. So it's sliding inside. It's like a spiral movement and the spiral goes back into the ground and then you enter. So that's how we practice it now. So for this, there are a few points now. In the kata, please do the full movement. Uh, don't do like this. So I, I will show, Mats goes up so here, so don't do like this, just like this. Allow yourself to complete the movement and come up. It's a good exercise. So what Mats will do now, he will first turn his sword in, catch my sword, and then he sends my sword down and I can feel it in my hip because it's a really deep one, this one. Then he goes in here. Now, his position now here is here. I should not be able to move his sword. And here I will cut myself. If his sword is here, I can remove his sword. So his sword is just here, a few centimeters in here. Now I cannot easily remove his sword and he's far away enough for me to not be able to grab him. If he's too close here, I will catch him here. So you should not be able to catch and you should not be able to take off the sword. So in this position here, it's a light touch, but it's very clear and I can't reach him. So now he's in command and I accept the movement. So we'll do it one more time. My cut now is almost to his shoulder or maybe head on the side here. So my cut goes forward in. Don't bring your sword back. Don't swing your sword back. 
you move your hands forward and cut. So it goes very quick, hands forward and cut on a, on a horizontal line like this. So from Hasso, I lean inside and cut and he catch and now he controls me. So his movement from Mukamai is up, spiraling, spiral down and turn in and control. Okay, please try it. Okay, so a few points here. <clears throat> Again, when you do the movement, when I'm mats, so I'm, I'm going to cut down. First, I turn inside here. Don't think about the next movement and, and go like this directly up. Complete each movement. So, ah, sorry, from here, Mukamai, he, he goes in. Now, think about this movement. Think about this movement. So you complete the movement down because you really want to remove his hip. There are other versions where you just want to remove his sword. Maybe Mats is here. So for example, if his sword is here and I only want to remove his sword, I do like this. I go bum, I go in. But this is not the case for this one. In this one, I remove his hip, which means it's a really heavy blow down a little bit behind him. And one more, a few more things. When you do the movement, don't see your sword. See your sword in the position, sorry, here. Now, from this position, you see your sword here. If I can see my sword all the time, my partner can see my sword all the time. I only vision my sword in the places I want it to be, where I want it to appear. Don't observe your sword in between. So if I'm up here, I'm up here. Now, the next time I see my sword is down. Bam, I see it now. The next time I see my sword is here. In between, nothing. Because if you start to observe your sword while you're doing it, your partner will also observe your sword and then the partner will do something other. So imagine your sword in the important places only. In between, it's just nothing. Then the movement will be much more fluid, much more quick. Okay, please try. Thank you. 
Okay, very good. So, I repeat, see your sword in the important places in the kata. In between, don't observe it. It just appears in the right places. Then your movement will be very clear and very fluid. So, uh, another thing, in the end, my opinion about this is in the end, you stop. Don't push, because pushing is very slow. And pushing, you tell your partner what you're doing. And if, if Mats stops here, so he, he's controlling me here. So I stop, I feel he, he's just standing there. For me, this is the most dangerous thing I can have because he's just standing there. He's open for anything. And I don't know what he's going to do. The moment he starts to push me and push, I, I will use his push. You start to push me, I use his push and I cut. Because he tells me what he's doing and he's completely open. So either he push and kill me or he don't push. So don't do something in between. When you come up from here, don't poke your partner. Don't push too much. I use this feeling of to, the kiai to means to complete, to end. And when you end, you become calm. And when you become calm, don't push because you just tell your partner what you're going to do, what you're doing. So it's actually over and you say, please stop fighting. So when Mats stops here, Now, he is not pushing, but he keeps the connection. I cannot remove, I cannot touch, and he's completely calm. This is the tall ending. The moment you start to do something with his sword, I, I will <laughs> use that movement. So either he has to cut through and kill me, or he stops, and he doesn't show himself. He just shows his position. So. So please be very calm in the end. Don't poke people with your sword. Be calm, just hold the position. It's like a stop sign saying, stop fighting. Okay, please try one more. Okay, so this is my understanding of this. It's, I don't say it's a Kashima tradition rule, but my understanding, the way I use the Kiai, I open, A go through, To complete, stop. If you think about this, you can either cut, through, open with I, you can enter with A, or you finish with TO, 
Tau is completing, stopping, ending. But none of these three are pushing or poking somebody with a sword. So it's like making clear, what are we doing? Don't poke people, don't push people. Either you cut or you enter or you stop. That's all. There's nothing else. All the other pushing and pulling and poking is unclear for me. So uh, these three qualities of opening, entering, and finish complete is in, in, for me in all the katas. Anyway, we go to number four. So number four is very similar to the first kata. It's just on the other side. So we show the first one one more time. So I come up in Hasokamai, I enter, he's touching here, one third of his sword here. And my feeling is I can't really reach him, but he's deep inside and he could enter here, but he chose to finish. The fourth kata is the same, but he goes on the other wrist, which means he has to turn the sword under. For the first one, he goes here, for the third, fourth one, he goes here. So the fourth one, he comes to the other wrist, but his position is the same. I should not easily reach him here. Now he finish and I accept the movement. Why do I accept the movement? Well, it's because he has a better position, not because he push. So again, let's do it in three steps. One, he will enter through. I come in here and he goes through. He steps into the opening. He's in here and he goes through the door. Boom. Because he's such, in such a good position, he can go right through here. Number two, he will step back and cut. In the same position, he steps back and cut before I can do anything. Number three, he's doing the kata here, and I accept it because I'm actually already defeated. If his sword is in this position, he's best for him, one third above his head. If he push his sword up, which is a very common problem. So here, he push his sword too high. In this position, I will step back and cut him. So if he's here and he push his sword too high, I will cut. So he protects himself here, somewhere here, that I cannot easily come in. He is inside and I cannot easily reach him. Now he could enter, boom, he could step out and cut me, or he can finish the kata here. So please look for this position. You're here, one third of your sword is above your head, so you can go through.
Okay, so the kata is actually finished when Mats is inside here. The end is more like a agreement, decoration, whatever. The, the, it's not when he pushed me down that he ends it. It's when he's inside and he shows me I have a superior position to you. So it's over and I accept it. So in the kata, we agree, but we agree in the agreement, we study where we are in time and space. And this is the most important for me to know where are we? Where is the opening? Where does it end? Where does it begin? And then there's lots of decorations around that. So let's look at the last one, number five, the last one. It's the last of the five we do today. So number five, it looks like this. So from my hustle position here, I will cut diagonally. But when I see his sword, I stop to protect my sword. But I actually don't cut his sword and trying to cut his head. Because if I was trying to cut his sword, I would cut his sword. So my feeling here, if Max is not reacting, is this. So my target is his head. And when I feel his sword, I just change and drop a little bit because I protect my sword. If I wanted to cut his sword, I would cut his sword, but I don't. So I just drop and protect my sword and my position. So it's about one third here. From this place, Mats, maybe from here. So we are here meeting one third. Now he creates an opening here. And I, I feel his wrist, his arm here. And that's the moment where I cut. So maybe from this side here. So we are in this position here, one third meeting. He puts his sword straight and I see the opening and I take the bait. This is like a bait here. So the feeling for me is I'm standing here on the line and then he removes his sword and I just raise my sword and cut straight. This is very important because if Mats is not showing his wrist here, I will not cut his wrist, I will cut his body. And if I cut his body, he has great trouble. Because <clears throat> if he's here, he removes his sword, but he doesn't give the wrist, I will cut. Now, when he tries to do the kata here, he's too late because I cut his body. It's almost impossible for him to control me because from here I have this action. And he doesn't want that. He wants me to come straight. So what he's doing, if I'm Mats, I'm here. When he removes the sword, he shows the wrist and he gives an intention here, a little bit intention here to call the cut. Don't move away. Because you can never run away from your partner's sword. If you move here, you will bring your partner's sword and you cannot run away from it. Then you will act in panic. So what I do is lean a little bit. I'll show my wrist and then protect. So Max is here, coming up. I enter on the side. 
Now he shows his wrist and I cut straight because that's what he gives me. Now he can control me here. If I would be inside here, he would be in a very bad situation. So, and this is because he gave me a bait to cut straight. So please try two and two. Okay, so for the fifth kata, so if, if I'm not, sorry, I go down, and you got in hustle, yeah, yes. So I'm coming here and he stops because he sees my sword. In this case, he wants to protect his sword. Now, I almost lean out here to call his cat. If, I start to move here, he will cut me. Don't bring his cut in this case. And don't try to run away from a sword. So the challenge here for me is to lean almost to the other side in order to call his cut out here. Because I want to draw his cut there. I don't want to run from his sword. Okay, so we will end because we have one hour. We do the five katas and you can look at them. We try to do them in a concentrated way. So. Hey! So, uh, before we finish, we will just bow out. I show me right.
And I want to also mention that we're in a limited place where it talks about the ceiling and the walls. So some of the movements, we have to be a little bit restricted <laughs> because we cannot express the movements fully. So just so you know that we couldn't express the kata fully because of the space. We had to adjust a little bit. But I hope you got some inspiration and uh, thinking about it's more where we are in time and space that's important than to push or pull or cut hard. And to feel when is kata over, you know? And it's maybe not where you think it is. Uh, there's a moment when it's over, and then the rest is just an agreement. So this is the way I practice and we practice, so uh, there are other ways of practicing. But uh, find out for yourself, and uh, I want to thank you for watching, and thank you, Matt Sensei, and thank you, Brian Sensei, for organizing everything. <laughs>